One of the things I remember is when Sister Margaret asked us to give, uh, to turn in to her anything we had that was directly from Mother Maria. Well, over 800 letters came that sisters had kept that Mother Maria had written to them. Uh, now we're in a day when we've got emails and we delete delete, delete. Uh, in those days it was, you know, handwritten letters or typed letters and people kept them. And the things people keep are the things that mean something to them. And so this means that f for some reason, whatever Mother Maria wrote to them, uh, whatever sh she said uh, was really worth keeping. was more Lithuanians in Mount Carmel than anybody will ever realize. They figured the Polish was more, or the Italian was more, but uh, I found out in my, my long life here that there was more Lithuanians. During the turn of the century, uh, Lithuania was uh, in turmoil. And what I mean by that is uh, the government at that time closed all the convents and also the monasteries. It would not allow women to join any religious community, and also the religious communities of men were asked to leave. She grew up in Lithuania like a, a normal person, a uh, normal childhood, and she came to America like thousands and thousands of other immigrants. When she was in Scranton, Pennsylvania, at her brother's uh, rectory, uh, she saw sisters for the first time. In Lithuania, religious orders had been suppressed, so she had never come in contact with them. And when she saw this sister leading a, a group of children uh, to the church, she asked her brother, who are those women? And so her first image of a sister was really in ministry, in doing something uh, for children. But during the same time, she saw as the Lithuanians were the new people coming in the immigrant church in Mount Carmel, she thought that no one was tending to their needs. And then she saw a need among the Lithuanian immigrants. Uh, they were living in these small mining towns in Pennsylvania, and uh, there was a need for education, and there was no one around who spoke the Lithuanian language, but uh, she founded our religious community to respond to that need of uh, education uh, for the Lithuanian immigrants. Many young women, many immigrants had already come to the Scranton area and they had young girls who were already in high school, etc. So when she started our congregation, she was fortunate in having young women ready to be trained as teachers, knowing both the English language and the Lithuanian language. Consequently, the priests in the surrounding areas and other Lithuanian parishes up in New England and also in the Chicago area would send young women to her if they felt they had a religious vocation. So the numbers began to grow rather quickly. So much so that she, the sisters at Marywood told her she really has to find a place to uh, establish a mother house because there were too many for them, their community and our community to handle. Father Anthony Stanukinas was selected to be the priest who would guide her because she knew she needed some a clergy to assist her in this process. He happened to be a very educated and a very holy man, and he was assigned as pastor in Mount Carmel, Pennsylvania. So what he did then is he remodeled the hall into a school. And in the beginning, there were only 78 pupils. By the end of the year, there were 105. And that proved that there was a, a much success with the school venture happening there. And of course, it succeeded for many, many years. They found a, a newly built like apartment building, and they offered that to her as the uh, first convent. If you read a history book in Germany right now, uh, and they talk about the Industrial Revolution in the United States, our town is mentioned as one of the key towns of the Industrial Revolution. Everyone came to live in Mount Carmel or the surrounding communities. This was the place during the Industrial Revolution. Uh, economically, it was very wealthy. Um, I even know that although we had 11 parishes before 1995, back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, we had over 90 grocery stores in our small town. Every ethnic group had its 
had its own church. Uh, the Slovaks had their church. The Lithuanians had their church. The, uh, the Italians had their church. The Ukrainians had their church. What happened is Mother Maria Kopis's community began in Mount Carmel, Pennsylvania, but because the big drove of immigrants from Lithuania that then came to Chicago, uh, the Archbishop of Chicago asked them to go out there, and that was their mother house after they left our area. By 1927, she recognized that the neighboring Lithuanian parish was building a school. The uh, low elementary grades would go over there. So then she decided this would be an all-girls high school. It grew with 500 girls. There was no room. We were bursting at the seams. And the leadership at that time had the wisdom to already buy the land across the way and uh, built what we call Maria High School, named after the Blessed Mother and after Mother Maria. And Mother Maria already had been, uh, had passed away by the time this building was built. But she did start Holy Cross Hospital in the area. And then she was given another hospital I saw a, a vibrant community uh, as I was growing up with uh, a number of uh, people that lived in the town and, and watched the population slowly uh, go downhill. Uh, watched a great business district that we had uh, slowly uh, deteriorate to only a few businesses now. I watched a, uh, a thriving school district uh, slowly uh, go down to a, a much smaller, smaller school district. I watched several uh, large communities around Mount Carmel uh, also uh, also stumble themselves and deteriorate into a smaller, uh, more concise group. So really the town at times seems that it's uh, just waiting for it to die. As I shared with you back in 1995, the, our town had 11 churches that were brought down to two. What the bishop asked is that all the properties had to be sold and all you would have is a church uh, to actually use as your worship site and a rectory. Uh, that met with me, with, my, with our parish that we had, um, we had five parishes that merged down to one. It was difficult. It was difficult for a lot of people. There was a lot of hard feelings, to be quite honest with you. And quite honest with you, there was a lot of hard feelings for myself uh, to watch, you know, my church, you know, close. And not to be able to say, isn't there some way we can keep this open? Isn't there some viable means that we can keep these churches open? In the midst of that, when she died 75 years ago, they really loved her life, and they thought that her life was worth telling uh, for Catholic community, but also uh, the United States in general, of someone who lived a life of simplicity with her friends and really transformed uh, the, the church for the Lithuanians. What happened is, right away after her death, the, the Archbishop of Chicago stated that we should look at her cause. Uh, but we are at a point now where Mother Maria is venerable. Prior to that, I know Sister Margaret Pitcavage was the one who put together what's called the Positio. That book was read by a number of, of cardinals, uh, bishops on this committee, and they deemed it uh, that she lived a heroic life and that what she accomplished for the good of others and for God, for the church, is at a, at a high level where we are with the process other than we are certainly praying uh, intently for her beatification. It does require uh, a miracle, uh, which I'm quite confident through her intercession uh, that we'll be uh, proclaiming a miracle in the next number of years, hopefully in my lifetime. There's a lot of us that know about Maria Kalpas, but there's a lot of us that, there's a lot of people in this community that don't know about Maria Kalpas. And it's again one of those things, the younger generations and the younger people don't really know much about her. And it's something that we, uh, as a community, need to promote more. And that was one of the problems, as Holy Cross closed, we lost that, you know, and we need to be, make sure that we return that kind of information to our community and, and to the people because she's not only a blessing to the Lithuanian community, she's a blessing to this whole town. We decided with the convent is to use that space maybe to really re-energize our community through volunteerism. 
So that's with, and meeting with my bishop and meeting with the sisters of St. Kashmir in Chicago, they allowed us to call it the Mother Maria Copas Center, a center for volunteerism. And that house will house many initiatives, a lot of community service, but I think too we need to be sort of people that look into the future. Look at too the importance in higher education and having a field station where college students could come to learn about our local community uh, and their own studies. So uh, we hope to be partnering with a few colleges, uh, similar maybe also with Bucknell University as a field station. Uh, to have a person that is on the road to sainthood, to be able to say that she walked the streets of this community, not too many places in this world can boast information like that. In your footsteps we walk Out of love each cross we carry Alleluia sings in our hearts Oh Mother Maria Walk with us Oh Mother Maria Walk with us As companions we feel blessed For your heart of love lives in us 